What's up guys, AT here for Bulldog Gear. Today I'm joined by Jamie Nichols. Jamie is one of the UK's top snowboarders, two-time Olympian, yeah. and the, the <laughs> first UK male to win World Cup slope style. Yeah. How did you find snowboarding in the UK? Um, so I started snowboarding when I was uh, seven years old. I actually lived quite close to a dry slope actually in Halifax where I grew up. It was like five minutes away. And I used to go there like after school, like six days a week, pretty much. I used to spend like three hours a night there. And then on Sundays, I used to, it was like a family day. We used to take it off and go, go for walks and stuff. But pretty much every day I was at Halifax Dry Slope. And from, at what point did you know you wanted to sort of transition from doing it kind of as a hobby into something that you wanted to do competitively? It's quite funny because like, I've, you know, people have asked me this before and I actually have no idea because I just went snowboarding to have fun. Like it, you know, it got me out of trouble. Um, there was a lot of trouble around where I grew up. So it was quite nice to just get away from that and have a, like a focus on something. And I was so addicted. Like I was there all the time. Like, and there was such a nice atmosphere there and scene. I got really like stuck in and everybody was so supportive and I just started learning and learning and then it wasn't till like I think around 2000 that I started competing and uh, I ended up starting to like be on podiums with the mitt like you know fully grown adults you know like I was tiny and then they were like next it so I was like at this point I was probably like eight or nine (laughs) and I was like on the podium like in the middle and there was like these two towering adults like next to me and then I'm like you know like they're looking at me probably looking down at me like you little (laughs) so yeah and then it wasn't until then that and I was just super like got super into competing and I was just loved like I got proper hooked and I just wanted to go and right then like there was contests every couple of weeks um what was called the AIM series which was a series of events across up and down the UK from Scotland right down to you know down to the south and it just yeah we just my mum and dad all friends from Halifax just we just drove around went to the competitions just you know, picking up medals. <laughs> so it was quite sort of organic. You were just yeah, you know, like it. naturally just happened. I was just yeah. enjoying it, and then it kind of like took. Like I started doing that for many years, and then it wasn't till about f- probably thirteen I started like competing in the mountains. And um, oh, by then I wasn't professional or anything. I was just enjoying it and loved snowboarding. Do you think that's quite a common thread in? extreme sports as a whole the kind of just enjoyment the process I think, and then just the competitions coming as a by the by of being good yeah i think so i think so because i never like like i said i never got into snowing to do that so it kind of just naturally happened like i just went snowing because i enjoyed it and and you know naturally you know went to competitions and started doing quite well um but i was never like never cared really about anything like the like the olympics or the money, nothing like that was ever a focus. It was just about trying to be the best I could and be better than anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of like, and I always saw that as tricks yeah. rather than results. So it was like the best trick that you could do or invent a trick. That was like the, always the aim or do something creative or cool like that, like a film project that no one had ever done before. And that's always been the aim, even now. Do you, do you think there's less pressure on that way when there, there's less of kind of a, a funneled approach to if you look at more mainstream sports, you know, you've got, you've, you know, I know you guys have got a league and you've got your World yeah, Cup and Grand yeah. Prix sort of circuit, but do you feel like there's less pressure because the more of a, like, the more of a freestyle element, so you're just enjoying I what think, you're doing, there's nothing like, yeah. you, the competition is kind of just something to aim towards but you're I think the competition the yeah so I think the competition yeah of course enjoy the process but the competitions are quite good because those tricks that you know it's so easy now to see what everybody's doing because of Instagram and social media but back when I was competing when you know Instagram and stuff wasn't a thing everybody used to turn up to these contests and like go, oh my god he's learned that trick and like no one would ever know yeah. so like but now you can see what everybody's doing so it's never really a secret but it's quite good because, you know, it's a good, like, everybody knows each other, like, we're all good friends. It's all, like, quite a small community. It's, it's good, and, like, when, you know, you have the American team, the Swiss team, the German, like, everybody comes to these events, and it's quite nice to see everybody because generally you don't get to see them very often. So it's quite a nice place because everybody's just enjoying it. Everybody rides practice like it's a session, like, with your mates, and, and then it obviously it comes down to the event, but 
it's it's always been quite you know quite chilled i always quite enjoy it do you notice that would you say the obviously you've been to the olympics twice is yeah. it is it a similar sort of like vibe or set up there or do you feel that like there's a bit more pressure on that stage in terms of like the snowboarding part like when everybody's and you know everybody's riding and stuff it's just like a normal session like you just got an olympic bib on like it's 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 quite funny because it's i don't i try and always kind of focus on it just enjoying the snowboarding part and the moment and not actually trying to overthink like yeah there's millions of people back home watching me on tv um because if i did i'd i'd probably wouldn't drop in <laughs> so i'd be so be so nervous like i was actually uh, going to that point um i was in pyeongchang the last olympics in 2018 i actually got spooked because i was like at the top of the big air drop in big air is the f- first time big air was actually in the olympics i'm stood at the top and and i look at the start list and i'm like oh my god i'm first to drop in so that means i'm the first to drop into an olympic big air ever uh-huh. like there's never yeah. been a living <laughs> I remember, and I was like at the top massive crowds of people in this audience and stuff and I'm like oh great like don't mess this up <laughs> kind of totally messed it up oh, really? <laughs> yeah the first run I was like kind of dropped in landed put like hands down and stuff and I was like I knew that because I'd like talked myself into it at the top of the drop in like I'd like almost taught like I'd said to myself like, oh my god I'm the first one better not mess this up as soon as I said that, I knew it was going to be bad. So, yeah, it was just talking myself into, like, falling over, basically. So with the, the kind of enjoyment process-based, you know, you're just there, you're having a good time. Yeah. Do you think that makes it a little bit more accessible or something that you think, maybe yeah. more tempted to stay involved in the more mainstream I, th- I think it, it's definitely, like, because it's not all about... Like, I don't know, like, you know, like with running and, and like, other sports like that, it's very like you train, 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 you go in like for a specific time or something like that. Yeah. There's with snowboarding, it's very, um, oh, what's the word? It's quite like it's accessible, of course, to like loads of different people, but you can at least like work on your own little goals and you can achieve, so it doesn't matter how big they are. And, and stuff you can still like make things happen so like for example like for me a back triple I admit that I'm talking like snowboard lingo now but this is like backside triple cork 1620 which has been done loads but for me that's like a huge goal to achieve and then um, and like I'm still working on it now and that's like going like do you know like spin 1620 degrees yeah, yeah. round and go upside down three of times course. it's quite a lot of <laughs> spinning and flipping but it's been done loads and and this is the thing it doesn't matter how big or small your goals are I just think that everybody comes together and and we just like try and make it happen for everybody so like say for example I've got you know younger guys I've coached before they might be totally into just learning how to do a 50-50 or a board slide and that might be the biggest goal ever and like there's no like nothing wrong about that yeah. like at all and um, so I love that about snowboarding because it's not all about trying to be the best and yeah. like be the you know and everybody's the same in my eyes everybody's just in, there to snowboard and enjoy it yeah so you're kind of just trying to perfect the craft whatever level you're exactly. at whereas in a lot of mainstream sports there's not this idea of evolving the sport, right? Obviously, yeah, people, yeah. Uh, people are running faster all the time. Of course and, they are. And stuff like that. And there's perhaps the idea that as a, as a newer sport, there's, there's more to be discovered. But I do think there's a lot to be said for the fact that it's, well, it's, a it's very, such a solo it, support. I know, and it's a very... Snow has always been a very... It's a very skill-based sport, isn't it? Rather than, like, I'm going to s- squat loads to achieve yeah. this, you know, or get like it's a lot on goes on like practice and just talent and you know skill basically do you you mentioned it earlier but do you feel like since like the rise and rise of social media and obviously this has been throughout yeah. your career yeah. do you feel like that's helped push the sport on because now you're seeing what other guys oh, are doing i think 100 percent. the only thing i would say about this social media thing which kind of killed a lot a lot of the stuff for me was the kind of filming projects that snowboarding used to have like used to get the you know VHS tape of like the latest snowboarding video and nobody would have seen what's gone down that season like what anybody's done what line somebody snowboarding in Alaska and like you'd see that at the end of the so like you wouldn't get it at the end of the winter but you'd get it at the start so like fall so in like September October right before the next one and you'd see what ever all the tricks what people had done 
um, the and the winter before, and it would be so exciting. I remember like used to like be like come home from school, stick a DVD in the DVD player, and see what people are getting up to, and then I'd go to Halifax on my bike and then try and do these tricks on dry slope, and you just don't get that now. Like yeah. that's totally dead from social media. Um, but I do think you know it has its ups and downs. Like yes, it's kind of killed that side of snowboarding. Um, but obviously now it's so accessible that you can see what everybody's up to right there and then, like live, you know, yeah. like that day, um, which is quite good in terms of, you know, you could be on a mountain and be like, right, he's done that yesterday, right, I'm going to go try it today. That wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. Yeah, you almost had like more of a <laughs> yeah, se- like, seasonal approach. Yeah, like, yeah. Right, more okay, like, this is what we're all working exactly. on this season based on. Exactly, yeah, so, based on what happened last yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. You, on the other side of that, do you feel like there's an element of a progression that's come up because you're not necessarily having to wait? Yeah. You're like, right, this guy's doing this. Massive so, yeah. progression. So when social media came around, I reckon there was a huge, like it was kind of like a slot and then it just went bang like that, I reckon, because people just saw what other people were doing instantly and trying it or trying to do something different or in a different way or even do that trick but spin more. Um, and yeah, progression has totally gone, had a massive jump, yeah. um, of course. And with the added, you know, Olympics, you know, be snowboarding being in the Olympics, I think that's definitely pushed a lot of people on, Yeah, for sure. Do you think that's encouraged a lot of new faces into the sport One, as well? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, I definitely feel like there's more people now at World Cup events, um, getting people from lots of different countries competing to try and go to the Olympics. And I think that's, you know, it's amazing. Like, it's so cool. You know, and it's bringing so many different countries together in one place, which normally it wouldn't. And um, it's quite good. It's a good crack. So you said you left it quite late to qualify because of yeah. your feelings towards it. Why yeah. do you, obviously it was the first time. Yeah. Um, what was it that you kind of disliked about the idea of your, your sport going to the Olympics? I t- so I, that's a good question. Because right back then I was very much into like, I was into competing, but compete, the, the competitions were totally different. So you have like two different tours. You have fist tour, which is World Cup fist points, which is ran by essentially skiers, um, like ski racing. That's where it comes on. And then you've got TTR, which is like real core snowboarding. And this is what, when I thought it was, we were just going to lose all that to fist. And this was the problem because fist took control over the qualifying system for the Olympics, which they have done, you know, with skiing, like all winter sports is generally run by FIS. So obviously snowboarding had to be run by this federation, which was kind of like against everything that, because I really wanted it to be TTR and a lot of people did, um, which was called Ticket to Ride Snowboard Tour, which was like, you have loads of different events all over the world and they're all ran by snowboarders. And we wanted to keep it that way and it ended up being not that way. So this kind of like, did have like kind of, because now a lot of those events in TTR like don't happen anymore. So like there used to be one that I used to go to in January called um, O'Neill Evolution and then there's like Burton European Open and I used to go to those every January, even from like being 13, 14 years old. Um, and both don't, you know, both don't happen anymore. Um, so essentially a lot of competitions kind of died off. Yeah. Um, because of the Olympics is now the major focus. You've obviously got the X Games, the Dew Tours and stuff, and they'll always be around and they're not connected at all um, to FIS. But FIS generally hold, like the Burton European Open in January is now called the Lax Open. And they're kind of good because they kind of separate themselves a little bit from it, but it's still, you can still get points towards the Olympics at that event. And, and that's the, I think that's kind of generally what's happened. Uh, and at first I kind of didn't really feel like I wanted to be a part of it but then everybody jumped on that bandwagon and then it was just like you know it's quite hard to like you just had to follow so um in that sense but it's really good like Olympics has done a lot for snowboarding um it's definitely put more into like the mainstream and stuff like more people in the UK probably know what snowboarding is now and that kind of slope style big air disciplines and I think that's quite good and I am glad that I did go for it in 2014 because if I hadn't I would have definitely regretted it <laughs> yeah and obviously it's a chance like, to represent yourself on that yeah on that stage. and the country and stuff and I, de- I would have definitely felt left out if I'd not like 
butts on my ideas and gone for it in the last two events. Um, it was just so annoying that it happened to be the last event and it was like I needed that result or I wasn't going. It was that simple. Yeah. And that kind of goes against what you were saying earlier about not wanting to feel the pressure. of <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And that, that was the worst thing. And I hate having to feel that pressure and I don't like it at all. Um, and I've never since then not done it again. Like, I've not left it to the last minute. Like the Pyeongchang when I like made sure like I qualified with ease you know I wasn't just ranking in to the top 40 it was like right I'm going to get myself here to like 10th 15th in the world so I'm definitely going yeah. <laughs> so it didn't have to re- I didn't have to rely on that last event that's actually quite interesting I think it's quite evocative of action sports in general that you were in kind of the position where you had the Olympics on kind of almost a take it or leave it yeah. type basis yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. for in mainstream sports it's something that obviously people work their entire lives towards do you feel like in action sports on a whole there is a sort of coming around process to the olympics where people are kind of accepting their sports being i don't want to say swallowed up but becoming part of the olympics and there's changes in yeah yeah of course and i i totally like back then i just thought it was a bad idea and now i've come around to it being like i think it's you know it's good to have it because it's it's nice to have like he set goals and stuff to to be an Olympian and stuff. And that's like a big goal. Like in any sport, that's like probably the, oh, it is the highest achievement you could possibly get to in sport. Um, And same, I don't know how it is with skateboarding because obviously skateboarding has just gone into the Olympics Mm. now. And I wonder what their world is thinking because maybe they're all the same. Maybe they're like what I felt like back in 2013 before snowboarding went in. But I do think it's really good. And I think they can be, they can be now both sides they can be that olympic side and they can be that like filming side and i know there's so many snowboards that i know that have not gone to the olympics and they're like if not more successful through their way of doing it like maybe film parts like for example there's travis rice who's an amazing snowboarder who's probably the best free rider for me in the world and he's like He's done so well, and so he's like one of the most famous snowboarders there is. But he's never done an Olympics, so it is quite, it is quite good that there's the, that there's both sides to it. So you can do it, or you can you don't have to do it, and you can take a different path and just be as successful. Do you think that the kind of there has to be a streamlining of of things when they go to the Olympics? And I guess it's the same with skateboarding. Yeah. And one thing that sticks out in my head is with climbing, they've integrated climbing into the Olympics yeah. and a lot of people are really unhappy about, or a lot of climbers are really unhappy yeah, yeah. because the way it's got to be doesn't necessarily benefit the best climbers or the best climbers in the world aren't necessarily going to be the best Olympians. Exactly. Is, is there a similar thing in snowboarding, would you say? I'd say that slopes for me I think slope style has the best of everything because if you're I don't think it's I don't think it's like climbing I think like snowboarding for example they have slope style which is a mixture of it could be anything like you've got rails jumps side hits everything so you have to be an amazingly good all-round snowboarder to win like without a doubt yeah. like we saw in the last Olympics um, Red Gerard who's an amazing pipe rider um, he's amazing on rails, he's amazing on jumps, and that's why he won, because he could just do everything. So he hit every transition in a different way to anybody else, and that's what, like, you know, makes a ju- you, you stand out to the judges, and that's the best, that's what you've got to try and do, is you've got to stand out a re- a, like ahead of the crowd and trying to be different. So, so um, would you say the version of the sport that's yeah. kind of evolved at the Olympics is pretty true to... yeah. Like, I'd say you know, yeah for like doing. yeah definitely because you're trying to hit things differently and that's what the judges want to see at what point did you kind of realize that to be the best obviously it's a sport that like a lot of action sports revolves around just practicing the craft yeah, yeah. at what point did you realize there was stuff you could do off the board and off the slopes that would benefit you probably uh, not until I'd start probably like a teenager at like 15 16 where I've kind of but I wasn't that I wish I was more into that like into it back then because I think if I'd have put more focus into you know a lot of the the training side of things behind snowboarding um and things might have been different but I just didn't care back then and and now I really care because since I probably 18 so last like the last Olympics especially the last one which I trained really hard for um it's just you know 
stopping you getting injured yeah. is the main thing because you keep, like if I, the reason like I did my knee was probably because I didn't train properly and it wasn't until I'd done that that I felt like, right, I nearly, I, you know, I'm, these jumps have got way too big, like <laughs> they're massive now and rails are huge and everything's just got way bigger that you do need to, you know, get under a squat rack now and again. Yeah. This is <laughs> just to like, build the muscle. Kind of come up again and again with, <laughs> with action sports athletes. Do you think there's something that um, is, how can I, how can I put this politely? Well, it's only really insulting me in my sport, but do you think, do you think there's something like inherently a bit boring about resistance training that for action sports athletes, it's just like, nah, because I, you know, growing up, I didn't do any organized sports and you know, they bored the life out of me. And it's not, yeah. not until later on in life. And I guess maybe I've just got more boring that <laughs> I like enjoy this stuff. But do you think it's just because it's much more fun to be out on your board? Well, I've got, like, I mean, what's there not to like about being in the mountains, jumping on jumps and different things? Of course, it's like the best part of it, but I'm not going to be able to do that if I don't train now. Yeah. Like, if I don't, you know, you know, squat and and make and just look after my body in that way, then I don't get to enjoy those kind of things because, again, my knee will be unstable and stuff. So I have to like really look after my body now. So this is the best way you know, training and, and getting under squat rack and stuff. And, and, do, and I do think, I try and do things so differently. So like, I don't just try and do the, the, the normal stuff. Like I try and like adapt my snowboarding into the gym and try and spin around and use weights, maybe put a weight vest on, jump on the plyo box, spin off the plyo box and try and add a little bit of creativity into my training sessions. And even doing like burpee backflips, just something like that, just something different like that is, I think, really good. I'll run around in the garden and flip around and stuff. <laughs> Makes it a little just bit Just something fun. like that. Just burpee <laughs> backflips. Just something like that. <laughs> is that hard? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Easy stuff. What um, percentage of your training, like, off the board, or how often do you, do you train? I would say on a good week, I'm training, like, four times a week. So I, I try and do like a lot of, a lot of my leg sessions, I try and add in a lot of um, gymnastic kind of stuff as well, even just on the floor, like, do, like I said, back flips, maybe do like five, you know, three sets of five, just good, do tuck, back flip, tuck, <laughs> and then, and then go under the squat rack and do some squats and try and like mix it into like some gymnastic stuff as well. Um, so that's generally what I do with the leg session stuff and then upper body, I kind of just keep it very like generic, like say, like, you know, like overhead, like shoulder stuff and chest stuff and, and very, just to keep, because obviously, you know, if you take a fall on the shoulder, if you've not got strong shoulders, you, you break your collarbone, pop your shoulder out and that's, yeah, 10 weeks, 10 weeks off a board. So yeah. you can't risk that. Is that kind of the biggest, the biggest thing to you with resistance training? It's sort yeah. of bulletproof in your body and just Basically, sort of but not building sharp. too yeah. much. So this is like the fine line of trying not to be too heavy, but obviously trying to be strong. Um, and I could, yeah, it's just, a, you know, it's, dif it's difficult <laughs> to try and manage that for sure. I found it quite interesting there that you've, you've like actually named some reps and sets, which obviously is quite, you know, a traditional approach to training, yeah. whereas the actual movements you're doing are obviously you've got traditional movements like burpee backflips that, that we all do obviously but what is a what percentage of your training is based around more traditional stuff like just squatting for sets and reps or do you just sort of feel it out and experiment with it i'm always experimenting like I, like i've got a whiteboard there and i never use it <laughs> like, i never write down my sessions it's and giving I always... me a twitch that there's nothing on there yeah is it? <laughs> i always like i i try so hard to follow my sessions that pe you know people give me and i i like i'm terrible at sticking to it i'm like oh that looks fun i'll do that like i never really have like a specific training like regime. like if I wake up and I can't be bothered I just won't be bothered and I'll do it the next day I'll try and do a double session one day <laughs> because I can't be bothered like I don't know it might be because of becoming a dad like sometimes I'm just too, too tired to get up yeah. and do a session but um I'm generally yeah I just kind of take it by ear like do it at, you know when I feel like it sometimes I'll come down here at 10 o'clock at night because I feel like doing it at 10 o'clock at night and not in the morning and I don't really, you know, I'll just do it like that. 
Do you think it's really you... bad, probably, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, I, I actually don't think it's at all. I don't think it's at all. Yeah. Like, there's like the best program in the world is the one you're going to stick to, which brings yeah. me to my next question, which is if you, you know, if you 100% had to, you were given, a, you know, a set, a 12 week set of programming yeah. that you had to follow to the letter, do you think that would put you off of training? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, 100%. Yeah, because no. I like if so because I the thing is I just I I'm so bad at like like following the I would say the rules like I feel like if that's like a, a set session like I can't break away from that can't break the rules but I love breaking the rules <laughs> so, I have to, like, so, yeah, so I'm pretty bad for sticking to it yeah I would say it's not a good good thing for me <laughs> would you would you say you take the when you've been given sessions yeah. by a coach and whatnot. Do you try to adapt those sessions to, you know, to yeah. sort of indulge your own curiosity yeah, or of just sort of completely freestyle it? Is there an element of I, just taking the, taking sort of the like, core parts out of the so, program? Yeah, so like the squats, like I don't really change them very often, but like I said earlier, like I, I was talking to you earlier about this, is I'm like, well, kind of snowboarding, I don't feel like I'm going to be squatting and everything's just going to be perfectly <laughs> symmetrical and other things so I'll be like right well I'll take the weights off one side add a load on that side and then I'll jump around and squat with loads of weight on one side of the bar and nothing on the other side because I feel like that's more likely to happen when I land on a snowboard is my weight is probably over maybe more of my front foot over my back foot and I've got to like throw my weight over and counteract that to to land essentially so this is great to squatting with weight on both sides but I think it's good for building muscle but for that like fast twitch and stuff like I think it's good to kind of mix it up and try things a little bit different. So you're looking for things that have immediate carryover into of your course, sport as far, as, you can, as, far like, as you can so, feel it. So if I do jump squats and I'm landing, if I've got loads of weight on one side, I'm having to like try and balance that and then go again. And that I think is as close I can get to landing on a jump yeah. on my snowboard. And how much carryover? So how long have you been kind of resistance training? How long has that been a big part of your... I'd say probably, so probably a couple, so 2018, 2016, 2015, 2016 was gen when I started focusing a lot on this kind of training. Um, and I do think it's helped because since I did my knee, um, I've kind of... I kind of knocked it into like a effect like I've got to do this because if I don't <laughs> things like this are going to happen and I can't be not on my snowboard for this long yeah because that was long like I mean six months not snowboarding sucked yeah. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen again so do you think that doing the resistance training not only obviously has, has helped you to rehab and then now you're kind yeah. of prehabbing you're you're making sure you're injury yeah. proofing yourself but do you feel like that kept your fitness levels up as well? Whilst yeah, you, of course, you and kept my focus. Like, cause I, I mean, I don't know, but I feel like everybody, if you don't train or do some sort of exercise every day, I'm grumpy, man. Yeah, like, I'm so grumpy. Like, it's like I'm hangry. Like, so I feel like I need to do some sort of physical exercise every day to keep happy. And um, when I'm home, this, the, you know, stretch, gym training, strengthening, rehabbing, whatever it is, I need that like something for an hour a day to do. Do you, do you feel like it maybe helped you kind of feel like you still had skin in the game as well because you're still training? So obviously, you know, you were yeah, still yeah, a yeah, snowboarder yeah. through yeah. and through, but you were, you were working towards something Working well. towards, yeah, yeah, of course, like working towards being a better snowboarder. Um, and obviously, the more I'm on my snowboard and the more I can stay not injured, the hopefully, you know, the better I can be. Um, those injuries are just, you know, setbacks, but sometimes it's good, like to have the, I always believe everything happens for a reason. And if I'm injured, then it means, you know, I need to take some time out and work on my, work on myself and get strong again and come back better. Would you uh, kind of advise that any, any young snowboarders getting into the game now who might think, you know, I don't need to do all of that stuff because I'm yeah, invincible. I don't know. Board. Yeah. I think, I think it's important to, to start. Like, I don't think it's important to start super young. Like, I'm not saying like really young, but I think it's good to do some sort of strengthening and, and stuff. Even like, you know, with the resistance bands, I think they're brilliant. Like I take them everywhere with me. And then um, some of the younger ones are always like, you know, you know, using them and stuff. And I think that's great. Like a lot of like needs to build, like, you know, if you, 
put it on a pole or something and stretch it out and then and do like like even for warming up man like the you know like even if you're young and you should warm up like i like definitely because that warming up definitely prevents injuries even if you're 11 years old i feel like it's yeah. an important thing to do you know like it's, yeah. it, it's stood up a top of a mountain it's freezing it's yeah. minus 10 sometimes maybe more and if you're not warm that's you know, it doesn't matter how young you are i think injuries happen obviously you bounce back quicker but i think it's important to for yourself to do it then because it might help you in the future yeah and create that good habit right the good I think, habit, I think yeah. when you like you say when you're younger you might bounce back quicker and it might not necessarily that might just be because what you're doing is not as um, as stressful on your body yeah, perhaps yeah. as what you're doing now as, a, as, a, as an older athlete but do you feel do you wish that you'd started at a young age I wish someone had talked but I mean so when I was like I mean when I snowboarded back then it was very different the Olympics wasn't a highlight everybody just drank and smoked weed <laughs> like that was pretty much a snowboarding lifestyle back then it's totally different now of course um, but I feel like we could be good examples going forwards to that younger generation coming up. Yeah, you, you mentioned this to me earlier, actually. I wanted to kind of bring this up and circle back to this. Which I found it was just quite an incredibly sort of profound thing to say. And you, you <laughs> spoke about how you, the stuff you're doing now for the good of the sport is for the next generation of course. coming up. And is if, that, I mean, did the, the Olympics factor into that? Yeah, and I don't want to feel like I've had all this amazing fun and experience and and stuff and gone to the olympics and then that not be there for future i feel like i'd have failed as an athlete if that i didn't carry on that like if i hadn't passed that down or made sure that when i retired from snowboarding i didn't give back because i feel like if people coming up don't have that platform that i had i did growing up and and going to the olympics then that'd make me quite sad so i feel like there needs to be something there and i feel like we're on the verge of even losing it and even now and I'm trying my hardest to like make sure there's you know you know talk to people in the industry like talk to the team and make sure there's a platform for those younger ones coming up and even because I feel like the lack of events now in this country which there was when you know like when I grew up there's like I said every two weeks there was a competition there is not that now for younger kids growing up and not a way for them to show their creativity and how good they are in front of all you know everybody in the industry in the uk and there's just not that anymore so it's trying to make sure like can still run events and and trying to do stuff but obviously you need money and 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 that is quite a rarity in yeah. snowboarding right now but i do feel like things will i think things will will sort itself out and we'll get you know get like we're getting there like there's a platform and there's kids coming up and we've got mia brooks on the team who's amazing snowboarder for her age and um, she's definitely one to watch out for so there is talent there and there's people coming up that can keep the fire burning do you think as part of that kind of legacy is uh, the what you want to hand down is an aspect of that the wisdom you've kind of picked up as you've aged um in terms of keeping your body injury proof and doing the training off the board is that something you feel is important to sort of foster in the younger generation yeah, so what, so you say like the trying to, the, the training aspect of the younger generation. Yeah, kind so, of being a, being a sort of apostle for that and making sure they yeah, know that it's important. Yeah, I think it, like make, yeah, definitely. And, and some like, like I said, Mia, who's coming up, I mean, she's, she's, you know, she takes it seriously for her age as well. Um, and she's great. She's already into training. She's already doing the stretching and stuff. And like when I was her age, I was definitely not doing that. So there's some hope. Yeah. Do you think there's any barriers for entry for, for younger snowboarders or any uh, sort what, of What, into sport? training? Yeah, yeah. Um, or is it just that it's boring? I, t I don't know. I think for a lot of them it's just that it's quite boring yeah. to them. I mean, they, it's quite hard. Like, so, you know, it is quite boring, but then it can be really fun too. So it's just, you just need that one person to show you that it is fun because it is fun. And you can, it's not just your typical go to the gym and just do some squats or something. You can get so creative with it. Um, you can get as creative as you like. Just use your imagination like you do on your snowboard and take it into the gym. Do you think that's the solution is kind of I think so. getting rid of yeah. the formal idea <laughs> the of... Formal, uh, what yeah, no, I totally agree. The yeah. formal idea of going to the gym. You know, a lot of people just go to the gym and don't even warm up. 
like, what's that all about? <laughs> like, I see people, like, I go to the gym sometimes, like, he's just gone to the squat rack, walked through the door, gone into the squat rack, and just gone there and, like, lifting 80. I'm like, he must feel bad in the morning. Because <laughs> like, like, I know it's so important to, like, do that whole, like, I think my warm-up before I even do anything, like, is at least 25 minutes of doing, like, a bit of yoga, like warming up my back and my legs and stuff before I do anything like that. But I make it fun, like jump around, jump on these, maybe like do a few backflips, like make it, you know, try and adapt it, you know, so it's like my sport. Um, and I think showing the younger generation coming up that, you know, it can be fun. Yeah. So talk us for a normal, sort of a normal session for you. So normal session, I'd, I'd come in here, like if it's sunny or whatever outside, like it depends because, you know, if I'm training, I haven't been training in here for long. But if I say I go to the gym, for example, um, I might go for a run before it, like just a quick run or a jog. Um, and then I'll get in the gym, I'll do some stretching, but not like over stretch, just a little bit to just warm up bit of foam rolling and then I'll just start doing loads of like jumping around some boss who work set up a little assault course like just stuff like that and do that for about half an hour and then I'll get into like the squatting and stuff but then by then I feel like I can go for ages because I've warmed up properly so I can do all my sets and I don't feel like I fatigue too quickly and um, because I think what I noticed is I had to find the right time to the right, right amount of time to warm up because if I didn't warm up properly once I started squatting I used to feel like I'd get cramped quite quickly and then I, I like since I've been doing that I don't and um, so it just gets all the blood going doesn't it yeah. um, and I used to get that from a guy who used to train who used to train with me I used to like um, he used to be part of the team I was strength and conditioner and he's called John Noonan and he was a, a amazing guy like I like he basically made gym training fun for me um, and working out because we used to like get in the gym and you used to have this like handball thing against the wall and you used to like a tennis ball and you used to like play handball basically to warm up and it was so fun and we'd do that for like 15 minutes and then he'd set up this like whole thing where you jump over bars, jump onto bosu, spin off and, and make it like, he, he kind of like introduced that and that's just, I've never stopped doing it now. And you, even in a commercial gym, that's... The, that's the even in the... And I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, everybody's like, what is he doing? <laughs> like, that's not normal. Um, but why is that not normal? I don't know. Yeah. Why do people think that's not normal? Because I think it's normal to me. Yeah. People just look at me like doing burpees and backflips in the gym. And like, what is this guy doing? But I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> Beyond the beyond like the beyond the fun stuff and the normal stuff you yeah. do like backflips, um, because they're normal. What <laughs> <laughs> what are the sort of meat and bones? So once you you know you're warmed up, um, you've got the blood flowing, yeah. you're feeling good, you're feeling excited for the session. What are the sort of sort of meat and potatoes movements that you so that the you move, use? Yeah, so a lot of um, there's a lot of single leg stuff I do. Um, so just you know single leg you know raises squats and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm really bad with names. I know the movements, but I'm bad with names. You could probably help me out with that. I know what a squat is. So obviously this could be squats. a good game, actually. Yeah. If you just sort of describe <laughs> them and I'll name them. Yeah, exactly. So, so a lot of single leg stuff, a lot of hopping around, um, single leg, um, what are they called? Squats on the side of one of these. Like a pistol on the box. That's yeah. it. Pistol squat. Forgot that name already. <laughs> that's it. So do a lot of those. Um, sometimes I do it with weight vest or, you know, add dumbbells into the hands as well. Um, do it on both shoes as well because I think that's really good to, like, kind of have that, like, snowboarding, you know, like, being there, instability yeah. about it. Um, so I think we do... I actually do a lot of both suit work um, when I'm actually in the gym. Um, and then in here... Um, just single legs, so do squats, single leg squats on here, front squat, um, single leg raises, calf raises, just everything, all that boring stuff, basically, after having fun. And what about your upper body? What your sort of go-to movements there once so you're done having fun? Upper body is generally classed as not as, I think it's really important, but from some of your point of view, everybody thinks it's not that important. Um, so I don't really have specific programs for my upper body, but I, I think I focus a lot on my core. It's a lot of core exercises, um, a lot of like holding. So like holds for like five seconds, 10 seconds. So pull-ups, for example, I'll do a pull-up, hold it for like five seconds, then drop down. 
um, so a lot of those isometric holds. Um, same with core stuff, so like side planks, I'll put weight on my on one of my side and then just hold for like a minute with like 10 kilos on my side. So a lot of stuff like that. Um, what are those called, like candlestick things when you hold onto the thing? Is it a candlestick where you hold on and then you lower down? Is that what Like a dragon flag. Yeah, well, yeah, there's so many different names for these exercises. <laughs> so yeah, those. Um, so try and do lots of stuff for my core because I think that's really important for when you're spinning and trying to use the and using the resistance bands as well to like pull and do a lot yeah. of fast movement. And um, because basically I use these here, but like in the gym I use like a cable or something and add weight. And then um, just the general shoulder stuff, chest um, press and stuff like that. Do you find that that core work you're doing and that isometric work, the holds and the you know the wood chops and do you? can you actively feel like that's had to carry over into your of course in? yeah yeah i think so because especially those wood chop these are wood wood chops those things yeah i think Let's they call it that, yeah. call it that. <laughs> so i think those actually help a lot because if you've got loads of weight and you're having to pull across like that for your core and you take that weight away and you're on a jump that really that action that is actually resembles you know quite well into snowboarding because you're going off a jump and that's what you do you like you spin across yeah. right and um, so that is a that's a really good one i think and i always like enjoy doing it and i think that definitely does help transfers across quite well and uh, what are your so if someone's looking to kind of get out uh, next sort of winter season yeah um let's say they're they're fairly sort of enthusiastic amateur yeah. what can they be doing in the gym now or on the run-up to yeah. that's going to improve the improve the fun they have on the, on yeah. the slope i think protecting these are the best thing you can do your knees are like so important and i think they're always the biggest injury in snowboarding and skiing it's people doing their acls mm. mcls you know busting the knees that's just typically a, a big injury in snow sports um, and i think the things you can do to protect that are like doing lots of single leg squats, BOSU, single leg, like around the clock, I like to call it, where you kind of do the toe touches. So you're on a BOSU and you like go out to the side, you're out to the front, out to the back and the other side. And I think that's, I think that's really good. And I think just doing a lot of um, band exercise as well, where you have the resistance on the band on one leg, stretch it out and just squat down and then squat back up. Um, I think just loads of stuff like that. You don't even need, I mean, you don't even need weights. Just get a few bands um, and and maybe you use even, I use even a cushion sometimes. Just stand on a cushion, single leg, and do so the you toe do that sort of instability. Yeah, because core, because it's yeah. not like totally flat. Just try and find something like that, and I think that's I think that's really good. Like, because obviously when I'm travelling, like we don't have all this stuff. We can't take a you know a squat rack with us everywhere on a plane. So it's just use whatever you can around the house. And I mean, you'll know you, there's so much you can do. Um, just with like, and you can easily go, you know, get some resistance bands and and put them in your board bag, yeah. or your bag or whatever, and and use them when you're away. And I think making sure that you do that as well before even going up the hill is really important. I think that's probably really pertinent right now as well, as a lot of people are kind. Of, some gyms are still closed, and some of you know. yeah, and you can do so much. At, you can do loads of stuff at home to prepare for going away on the mountains, yeah. definitely. And then and then also taking that i mean i stress it enough but taking that what you've been doing at home and doing it in the morning before going up the mountain you should do it like because i think it's really important i think what uh, a lot of the disconnects a lot of people have i think with professional athletes is they're assuming that you're always going to have access to like a multi-million pound facility to do your all. training it's going to be like ivan drago in rocky and you, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, be monitored yeah. but when you think about it for longer than like five minutes you realize that you know you're traveling a lot you're in yeah. hotels up, up mountains and exactly what would be a sort of go-to workout for you in the season when you're traveling when you're standing in a hotel so i've always i've always taken resistance bands with me everywhere because i feel like i can do a lot with those um i just use anything like fill a rucksack with as much stuff as i can um, and just do like some single leg squats pistol squats with a rucksack I think rucksacks are great. I mean, you can just, I mean, I've always used a rucksack to fill it with stuff. Um, so that's always been a big thing. And then just lots of hopping drills. So like putting like, I don't know, like 
I even use my snowboard. So I lay my snowboard down on the floor and I'd like, you know, even like put some weight in the rucksack and just hop side to side, taking your socks off. Because I feel like if you're doing socks, you just <laughs> fall over. Yeah. yeah, I prefer to do a lot of things in bare feet. But um, yeah, so do, lots of stuff like that, I think is really good. Like you just get creative and make it up, man. Like I, I like, I never have like a specific thing I ever do. I just like whatever feels right at the time. Like I'm like, I'll grab that and just make something happen. Yeah. And that's that's obviously seen you through this far, right? Yeah, and it's seen me through two Olympics. Yeah, I've not like I've never had like a, a home gym or anything like that. I've always gone to the gym myself, and um, and like I've always wanted to build a home gym, but I've just never got round to it. Uh, obviously, now I have, uh, but I've never had a place for myself. So that's you know, like growing up, I lived at my parents, and. My parents are not going to want me to build a massive shed with a gym in it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like trying to like just work things out and, and you know, even like I used to get like a mattress out, like an old sketchy, you know, like an old mattress that my parents I used to use it loads, but just running and just flipping onto it. And I used to think that was great, like like for the gymnastic based skills. Um, I think that was brilliant. But I mean, you can just use whatever. You don't need money to to like make something happen. Since having a having a home gym yeah. set up, have you noticed much as of an, of an uptick in your training? What's I definitely feel struck. So, like, let's put it this way: I haven't trained. I haven't been on my snowboard for a month. I just went to a contest. I trained heavily in this gym for like a month. I went out there, hadn't ridden my board for a month. Like, I'm talking a whole month, and then got there, did five runs training, and landed my run like like that. And that I've never done that. I'm not even joking. I've never done that. <laughs> so like, I feel really strong at the minute yeah. and really good. Like my knees, not I'm not having any knee problems because I've really been, because the thing is, is trying to just like getting yourself up and just even that drive to the gym is sometimes like, I can't be bothered. Like, getting it. But like, I think like now having like the gym at home, I feel like I can just, you know, get coffee in the morning, wake up, come down here and just do it. And I, I definitely think that's massively helped and it's been, yeah, a, you know, great investment. Yeah. And the best, you, probably the best investment, for sure. I just wish I'd done it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're a father as well, right? So yeah. So being able to not have that lag time where you're travelling to of and course. from the gym, all of that makes a, a huge difference. And like, yeah. so it's easy to say, not today, when there's a drive. It is you know, drive super easy. Yeah, there, right? super easy. And, um, and I definitely think, like, now being a dad is definitely just that time, like getting that, you just don't have time. <laughs> so like any time you have, like, you know, like sometimes I put it down for a nap and I'm like, I might have half an hour or I might have an hour, but I don't know because yeah. she might just wake up and I might have to go back inside. So like having this is just great because I can just come down, bring the monitor with me. Yeah. It's giving you <laughs> those opportunities quick, back, yeah, right? Give, yeah. yeah, those, yeah, exactly. Um, and because my wife works as well and we're both working, we have to take it in turns. So having to having a specific training is just it's just not since i'm a kid it's just not there so having this now is really good what um what kit have you got in here and what do you think's made the biggest difference what do you spend the most time on what do you enjoy the most i enjoy so i enjoy this what i'm sitting on now the plyo box i love the plyo box um it's been horrible weather so i've not really had it because i'd like to have it outside because there's a little bit more room than in here but um, it, I just use this a lot for spinning off and on, even just doing backflips off of it. I think it's great. Um, and then I, obviously the squat rack. So I've always, always wanted one of these because I feel like just if I'm feeling lazy and I don't really want to do any of these pistol squats, if I want to get any leg action in, I just go on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like, I'm like, I can't really be bothered doing these pistol squats today, but I feel like I could be bothered doing some squats. Um, and I, I've never had a squat rack until a couple months ago, and I've loved it. Like I'm on this more than anything else. I think this, this, and that. Um, and I just I, want to say that action sport athletes are a different breed because I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard anyone say, "If I'm feeling lazy, I just do some squats. I just do some barbells and squats." Like everyone else this. is looking for an excuse to swerve them. <laughs> See, I'm looking for, I, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I'm not too lazy. With, I love doing some squats. I'm down for it. Um, and just, and the jump squats too, I really like doing those. And then just freestyling it, take the weight off one side and mess around. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. Um, but yeah, no, this is definitely one of my favourite bits of kit, for sure. 
And obviously and you've, you've mentioned bands already. So were there, would you kind of look at those as being your top three? Let's say someone who is looking yeah. to take their snowboarding a bit seriously. They've got a bit of a budget. They, like yourself, they want to kind of put a kibosh on the time constraints and have somewhere from home. So plyo these, box, I mean, bands, these, I mean, these are, rack. yeah, I think the, like, I think these are so important. And I mean, they're just, they're, they're kind of just, it's just rubber, isn't it? Yeah. There? But like, I think these are really important to have. I, and they're so light, easy to take away, and you can do so much with these. You can do loads of upper body stuff, um, loads of leg stuff with it, and I think they're great. And I've always had these. Even like before having any of the, I've always took bands with me wherever I've gone. Um, I just think it's good for warm-ups. Take, we even did, I actually took, um, not this one, but I had a black one. And I had it in my bag for like just before, like last week when I was competing. And then even like up on the top of the start gate before I drop in, because obviously I have to wait for our run. So that could be, well, it could be half an hour wait. So you just finished practice, everybody's dropping in, you're like 20th to drop, that could take 20 minutes. So you're up there, stood around for 20 minutes, you've just finished practice. And I think having one of these in your rucksack is really good, because I mean, you look like an idiot, but everybody's doing it. So you've got, got one of these to just keep warm and like doing some squats with them. Put, so I always find like, I always stand on it, put it round my back of my neck and just squat loads. Yeah. And I feel like it's really good and sometimes jump as well. And I think it's just, just doing that, I think it's really important. What I find really interesting is as we've sort of come through the end of yet another lockdown, yeah. there's a lot of like casual gym goers who are knocking the idea of training with resistance bands because they think they're not getting, oh, you know, you can't get the same kind of workout that you do in the gym. Yeah. And I've spoken to a lot of professional get, athletes yeah. who are like, yeah, man, get resistance bands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you can get a solid <laughs> session yeah. with these. Like, I feel like I, if I did like, if I stood on this and did like 50 bicep curls with one, I'd be pumped. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, I, I definitely feel like you just do more reps. Yeah. 100%. It's just, that's just it, more reps. Just obviously not as much weight, but I think they're good, man. So what's next for you? Um, so next is, um, I guess, I've got some more of it, well, depending on the situation this winter, um, got, you know, qualifying for the Olympics, um, and then, which will be my third Olympics. Um, so we'll see if I get to that. Um, but obviously, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be trying to do some filming as well. So I like doing film projects. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I've got some projects on the go this winter. Um, and we'll see what happens. Because I have kind of I was going to do one um, in the summer with uh, the Snow Centre in Hemel, um, which is my first one I ever did. It was called Hemel Run. Um, and it had like 11 million views or something. It was basically me riding through the snow centre and then riding outside. I really wanted to do another one because we had a different idea. Um, but it's been put on hold, unfortunately. But hopefully we can get that going again soon. Do you feel like, um, sorry, I'm probably circling back to something we should have spoken about earlier. Yeah. But do you feel like with the rise and rise of YouTube, that's given, I know you mentioned earlier that it kind of is not the same anymore because you don't get that pre-season VHS. Yeah, but do you feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. With YouTube, it's given people an opportunity to make kind of more of an income out of the sport. Of course, yeah, because there's different avenues you can go down now, and I think that's great. I mean, I would say it's really difficult to make, like, I mean, it's not really about the money, but like, it's it kind of is, because you, you, know, you need to be able to have money to go snowboarding, right, yeah. and do these projects. Um, so when you kind of go down a route like that, you kind of just scraping by. So a lot of the guys, like you, kind of, you might get paid ten grand a year, but that basically goes on filming. So you're actually not making anything, but it's a lifestyle. Yeah. And that's what you know. Like it's not about that. It's about going, just being able to get money to go snowboarding. Is kind of it's it's an amazing lifestyle, and it's like you get to travel the world. Like I've been by. By the time I was like 16, I'd gone all over, like China, Japan, Korea, like all over the place. And like, that's, I'm lucky, like that's re like really lucky to be able to do that. And um, just to see the world by then, it's like crazy. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. And you grow as a person and, and like I was so mature for my age, then like it's, it's mad. I think it's brilliant. Lucky, <laughs> very <Yeah>. lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for chatting yeah, to us today, Jenny. Thanks, well, where can people find you online? 
Um, so Instagram is just um, Jamie Nichols UK. Um, that's generally the platform I use. I'm rubbish on Twitter. I'm rubbish on Facebook. Um, but um, yeah, Instagram is the best place to find me. Well, thanks again, man. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, dude. It was really good.